This is what you'll find Daoud Ibrahim doing every Sunday afternoon once the weather gets warm. Sitting in a chair at the park, beating his drum. The drum, rather than most other instruments, is perhaps the first instrument. It has the capability of singing, the capability of rhyming. It has a voice, and each player has a voice. At 87 years old, it's a voice Ibrahim uses to spiritually connect with his African ancestors, who he says carry their history through rhythm. But this is the purest form in that we have no trumpets, no violins, no musical instrument except the drum. And the drum speaks of time, it speaks of places, it speaks of eras that is only in our own records of our, of our, uh, our genes. It's not something that springs just from this generation, but from many, many generations that have passed. Generations now coming together to take part in this drummer circle inside Prospect Park. The practice dates back to the 1960s when members of Brooklyn's growing Afro-Caribbean community, known as the Congo Square Drummers, would gather to celebrate the musical traditions passed down through their ancestry. It's just that there's a certain power. I don't waste my time with things that don't give power. And I thought that it was a powerful thing that people were doing. That feeling is what drew Roland Lucas to the circle nearly 30 years ago while taking a walk in the park with his son. And even though Lucas has been living in New Jersey for 18 years now, he makes the trek over the bridge every week just for this experience. There's a certain element that involves the spirit of African Americans, you know, African people that's here. Congo Square, the original was in New Orleans, and the enslaved uh, Africans were allowed, you know, one day to just cut loose, you know, and that was the foundation, and this place is named after that. So it still has that connection. The Prospect Park Alliance designated this area as Drummer's Grove back in 1997. And even when the music's not playing, it might seem like another regular day in the park. But drummers assure me the spirits of the ancestors are always around. For like 12 years, I studied with a teacher named Papalaji, who claimed to be the first person to teach the djembe drum, the, the lead drum in this country. He passed away, so I feel like I'm carrying on something that he instilled in me. When I play my djembe, I'm thinking about him. And, I'm, and I might say to myself, I might say, Papalaji, show me how to drum. Even though I've been playing for 30 something years, I, I'll still say, Papalaji, show me what, how to drum, you know, teach me. And while the spiritual connection remains the heart of Drummer's Grove, over the years, it has also welcomed others who respect the tradition, like Amy Yamuchi, who was originally from Japan. She still remembers the first time she was drawn to the circle. So uh, when I hear that, I, I'm so exciting. Then I, I come to, you know, start to play. She says in Japan, drumming is also used for spiritual connections. This is kind of my, you know, uh, meditation. I'm a Reiki healer. So when I came, when I play, I can focus more, you know, meditate. The people come out and they sit on those benches and hardly a word comes between us and them. We pass each other coming in and going out, but they sit and they've done this for years because the rhythms speak to them. The rhythms tell them that all is well. If we're drumming, we're fine, all is well. A magnetic energy drummers here hope will live on for generations to come. I'm Melissa Rose Cooper, and thank you for sharing with Mel. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you enjoyed this video and want to show your support for more like it, you can simply buy me a coffee. All the details are in the description.